In this video, we're going to create, rig, and animate a 2D game character using Photoshop and Unity. We'll learn how to go from a simple sketch to placing bones inside the skinning editor to making icky handle controls and finally bringing our creation to life with animation. With the Blackthorn Brothers, if our videos are helpful to you, make sure to like and subscribe. It's really appreciated. Okay, let's get started. Step one, sketch a bunch of character designs. My goal is to create an undead creature so I can look at reference images and use my own imagination to come up with some interesting designs. Step two, pick a sketch and polish plus color it. At this point, we're also going to be preparing the character for rigging and animation. This means it's important. We draw each body part on a separate layer. So for example, I'll create a head layer, ink the head, make another layer underneath that in which I'll color the head, then merge those two together for my final head layer. I'll repeat that process for each body part. Now keep in mind that layers on the top of the list will render in front of layers underneath. When I'm done inking and coloring, I can crop the file so there's a minimum of white space around my character. I'll also disable the background layer so that it's transparent. Step three, now I can head inside of Unity and head over to my package manager. Let's start by importing the 2D animation package and the 2D PSD importer. This later one basically turns each Photoshop layer into a separate sprite, which will save us a ton of time. Now I can head back to Photoshop and save this file as a PSB into my Unity project. Step four, time to rig our character. But, but, but just before that guys, we've got a really exciting announcement to make. Liam and I have created a free game development course. It will teach you the fundamentals of Unity and C Sharp while actually building your very first game. So it's a must have crash course if you're interested in this incredible art form. The link is in the description. Again, it's completely free. Okay. Back to the tutorial. Rigging basically means that we will create a digital invisible skeleton inside our character, which we'll then be able to use to animate him. So let's go over to our import settings and start by setting the mesh type to full rigged. Then I'll head inside of the sprite editor. We can go up here and choose skinning editor. From there, we'll have access to all of our rigging tools. I'm going to click on create bone and start by left clicking to create a bone for my body, which in this case is this weird looking tomb. Once I've made that bone, I'll right click to end the chain. Then I can left click on that bone and left click again to make a new bone, this time for the head. The reason I first clicked on the body bone and then made the head bone is because now the head bone is parented to the body bone, meaning that whenever I move or rotate the body bone, the head bone will move with it. I'll do the same for the arms, left clicking on the body bone first so that they're parented, then make several bones for shoulder, elbow and hand. For the legs, I don't want them parented to the body since I don't want them to move when the upper body moves. So I'll simply make separate bones for those. Now you can click on edit bones and rename each one. This will save us time and confusion later on. Step five, let's get these bones actually moving our sprites around. To do this, we can click on auto geometry. You'll see there's a couple settings here. The higher these two values, the better the results, but it will cost a bit more performance. Let's click generate for selected. You'll see that now when I rotate a bone around, my sprite also moves with it, except it looks very weird. Let's head over to Bone Influence. I can double click my body sprite and make sure that only the body bone has any effect on it. I'll then click the head bone and make sure that only the head bone has any effect on it. I'll do the same for the arms and legs. Now if I click on Preview Pose, I can test my newly made rig. And when I'm done, you can simply click on restore pose. Quick note, you can also use the weight brush tool. For example, you can select an arm, then select a bone and paint in how much of the arm you want that bone to influence. So just imagine for some reason we wanted the hand bone to move the whole arm. We can increase the brush size and left click and paint the entire surface of the arm so that when we rotate the hand bone, the whole arm rotates with it. Realistically, of course, you'll be using this more sparingly, making small tweaks to the way your bones move the sprites. This weight brush is especially useful for more organic creatures or even simply to rig characters made up of a single sprite rather than splitting up each body part using separate layers in Photoshop. Step six, when you're done rigging, make sure to hit the apply button up here, which will save your changes. Only then can you leave the sprite editor. Let's drag and drop our character inside of the scene view and you'll see that the skeleton is still there. And now you can select individual bones and move your character around. To finish up this character rig, let's set up IK controls for the arms. 
IK stands for Inverse Kinematics and will make animating arms and legs a lot more intuitive and simple. We'll start by selecting the root object and adding a new IK Manager 2D component. From there, we'll click on this plus sign to create a new IK Solver and choose Limb. You'll see that a new Limb Solver object has just been created and it takes in an empty game object. So let's make one. I'll head to my right arm bone and create a new empty game object that is parented to it. Then I'll move it along the arm towards the wrist. Then I'll drag and drop it inside of the effector slot in the inspector. Then click create target. You'll see a new target game object which I can move around and you'll see that my arm moves along with it. We've successfully set up an IK arm control. You can do the same with the other arm. You'll notice that the IK is weirdly inversed in this second case. We can easily fix that by selecting the solver and checking the flip box here. To clean up the hierarchy, I'll make a new empty game object called solvers and drag and drop my two limb solvers in there. It doesn't matter whether or not our targets are parented to the solvers. In fact, we're going to want to parent them to the body bone instead, because for now, you can see that if I move my body, the arms remain stuck in place. So let's parent the target solvers to the body bone so they move and rotate with it. When you're all done, you can click on Restore Default Pose to reset the rig to its starting position. Step 7. To create an animation, head over to Windows Animation. This will open up the timeline. You can click on Create New Animation. I'll call this one Idle. Now click on this red record button. This means that now, whenever we move, rotate, or scale our bones, that manipulation will be baked into the animation. For example, now I can grab the body bone, move the timeline a little, rotate the body, and you'll see these small diamond shapes. These are keyframes, and they hold the information of the state of each bone at any given time in our animation. So if I click the play button, you'll see that the body rotates. It starts here and slowly gets to here. I can of course left click on individual keyframes and move them around the timeline, bringing them closer together to speed up the animation or drawing them further apart to slow things down. I can scale a bone to scale the sprites that are attached to it. I can also move bones. I can click on the starting keyframes, hit Ctrl C to copy them and paste them at the end of the animation with Ctrl V. This way the animation will loop meaning we'll have a continuous, smooth animation because the first and last keyframes are the same. When you're happy with your animation, make sure to disable the red record button. And if we press play, you'll see my character is playing his animation in-game. I can head back to the timeline and add a bit more life to this idle animation, perhaps using my IK arm controls to move the arms up a bit around the middle of the animation. Perhaps I'll also add a little wobble to the head by rotating the head bone. Step 8. I challenge you to draw, rig and animate three different characters. Perhaps create a two-headed ogre, an exotic monster plant, or an ingenious gnome and its deadly mech. Play around, experiment and have fun. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, we'll be posting a quality game dev tutorial every single Sunday, and of course leave suggestions on what tutorial you would like to see next. And remember to check our free game dev course that teaches you the fundamentals of using the Unity game engine and C-sharp programming. Alright, thanks so much for watching, cheers!